Discover new opportunities together in a new Chevy. Meet up in an Equinox, winner of the J.D. Power Award for initial quality among compact SUVs. Lend a hand in the strong and capable Silverado or mix it up in a high-tech Trax with an available 11-inch diagonal touchscreen. Find family, friends, and fun in the Chevy that's right for you. Click to learn more. Chevrolet, together let's drive. For J.D. Power 2023 U.S. Initial Quality Study Award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of statistics, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and an enormous selection of players and stat options are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million football fans who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com/get100 and use code GET100. That's code GET100 at prizepicks.com slash get100 for a first deposit matchup to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Background music and ambience brought to you in part by Midnight Syndicate, masters of instrumental gothic fantasy and horror soundtracks for your imagination and makers of the official Dungeons and Dragons soundtrack with the Lucky Land Slots you can get lucky just about anywhere this is your captain speaking uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky no no nothing like that it's just these cash prizes add up quick so I suggest you sit back keep your tray table upright and start getting lucky Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. Last time on A Fool's Quest. Shortly after returning to Cheddar, our heroes were summoned to the port town of Seaforge. After traveling there and visiting several of the inns, they met with the local judge, the halfling Histia. She charged the troop with the task of exterminating a nearby nest of harpies. Now, let's join Michelangelo, the Tortle Cleric, Malfador, the Azamar Paladin, and Dwarven Brewmaster Ingvald Porter Altbeer as they band together in their pursuit of a fool's quest. So you guys stick around here and call it a um, night or what? what time of the night is it it's pretty late i mean yeah um, probably, so. yet. probably probably around 11 at night right now so uh so i'm probably good i'm gonna put my brewery stuff or all my stuff in the room get a brew starter then go down okay all right so you guys do so that drink and try and get information while i'm at the bar yeah. okay um so you you hear a lot of rumors i mean it you know, it's it's a bar. There are a couple different captains that are that are at the bar. Ship captains. Um, they, uh, you know, a couple of them are a little rude and, you know, grouchy. Like, you want to gossip? You know, go to one of the other bars and talk with the sailors. They squawk like chickens. But there's, you know, there's a couple of them that are like, oh, you know, this is kind of what we've seen going on in the world. Uh, most of these places you've never heard of, uh, but you do notice that they. You know, everywhere the Adventures of Guild seems to have some kind of presence. Um, as far as local news, they really don't have a whole lot of local news here, just because most of them aren't from here. Are there any of the uh, town guards nearby? 
Um, they, the town guards are not inside um, this this uh, inn, but there are some patrolling. There aren't a whole lot of town guards in the, in Seaforge. There's you know, probably a dozen yeah. that you've seen total throughout your time here. I was trying to get the impression that you information from somebody that's here all the time. Yeah. Uh, do I see? Do you see anything interesting going on in the room? Anyone doing anything? Um, no, no, not really. You do see, there's a couple guys playing some dice, a couple of captains, uh, you know, tossing dice in, in the corner, but, um, uh, you know, like it's not, that, you know, not, nothing crazy, just killing time, you know, drinking, killing time, waiting for their ships to be unloaded, and, um, uh, you know, you assume most of them probably already have their shipment that they're leaving with already lined up, so they're not, they're not hustling right now. Uh, waving over the, uh... This kid, give me a beer. <laughs> yeah, he keeps. Even you though I'm sitting keep, close keep, to the bar, and <laughs> don't move. Just to call him over. <laughs> yeah. I, literally, I, just, I like have a full beer. I'll chug it and hand it to him. <laughs> All right, yeah. So you guys hang out for a little bit. Um, you know, it's a pretty uneventful night compared to what you guys have have uh, had recently. So it's kind of kind of nice. Take it while we can get yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you guys, uh, you know, we'll, you know, get get a little bit into the morning and then. You really should probably should call it, considering you're going to have to go fight some harpies tomorrow. So you guys uh, start going and heading to your rooms. Um, at this point, most of the captains have also retired for the evening. Um, so you guys were kind of the last people last people awake. Actually, Lanky Kid left, you know, maybe an hour ago <laughs> at this point. Like, yeah. had to get back. <laughs> um, so... That's why we're turning in his, his, his beer. Is dry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that was> <laughs> I just got grumpy and... <laughs> Well, it's just empty. <laughs> yeah, just drunk and they stumbled upstairs. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> like a frown, a slight squint. <laughs> um, as you guys start like to turn squint. in for for the night, um, you know, you guys are about to take, you know, your armor off and relax and whatnot. Um, you all three hear a uh, uh, the sound of a child, um, like screaming, just outside <laughs> the inn. Um, not, not like. You know, not like sailors, but like a little kid. Mm. Yeah. yeah, makes a yeah. wail. Do I have windows in my room, and are any of them facing the direction of the noise? Um, you do have windows in your room. Yep. So uh, I open a window and look out into the street. Yeah. Um, so um, you look out there and you see uh, this kid um, being held by what looks to be three grown men. And one of, well, one man is holding them, but there's three grown men out there. And one of them is, like, shaking. Um, make a, uh, a perception check real quick. 16. Oh, proficiency. 18? Okay, that, uh, that does it. Um, strangely enough, you recognize this person, uh, one of the people, as, um, the drunk guy that's continually been at Mike's Tavern. Oh, okay. Every time the, one always the one that's always asleep. <laughs> yeah. He's kind of... He's kind of like... Though he's not the one holding the kid, but he's like speaking to the kid and speaking to the other two in a hushed tone, but like... Do I get like kind a of, bad vibe off of him? Yeah, you're getting kind of a... Do right. they see me? They don't see you. Uh, yeah. You, you, right. That you know. Am I on a second floor? Or you're on a second floor, yep. Yeah, I'm not very really acrobatic, so I'm not snatch myself. We're all in separate rooms, right? Yeah, you're all in separate rooms. Head down, I guess. I heard the kid. I'd go investigate. Probably meet me being, in the hallway. Yeah. Being lawful good and all. Yeah. Did you guys look out your window at all as well? Or no, I just, heard the, I just heard the screaming. Walked. Okay. Yeah. So you Damsel guys... in distress. Hopefully it's a live uh, one this time. I night. actually... <laughs> I just jump out the window. <laughs> okay. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> Grabs his blanket like a parachute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, uh, because of the drunken stumble, I can negate falling damage, even if it were to occur. Uh, drop like rocks. I can use my reaction when I fall to reduce any falling damage taken by the, by about five times my brewmaster level. So. Yeah, that would that would encompass here okay. from a second story. Yeah, I mean, so I, yeah. Ta- I essentially take no damage whether I. Ever fall. Okay, so here's... I literally That's just, handy. I'm just like, yeah, like, from a second story building, I can survive that. <laughs> just fine. Yeah, so, so I, uh, Michelangelo <laughs> and Malfader, 
uh, hear the scream, they immediately turn back out their doors and start walking back downstairs. Uh, Ingvold <laughs> decides to look out the window, recognizes one of the dudes, and takes his dwarven brewmaster and ass have, and jumps I, out the window. I, I, have, I have my mug of beer that I was drinking when it happened, and my short sword is drawn and I jump out the window. Okay. So yeah, so you, you land with your sword drawn and your uh, beer in hand. So involved. I should down. get an intimidation. <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> well, depending on if you stuck the landing or not. Yeah. Stuck oh. the landing. <laughs> Pat on the knees. <laughs> uh, so, um, so you're still a good. Scared the shit out of them. <laughs> Fifteen yards away from uh, the men and the kids, he sees you. I was, um, says he just hears that. Cause I'm like, what am I? A hundred and yeah. <laughs> Fucking That's a great visual. How heavy am I? I'm huge. Heavy dwarf okay. jumping out of a window with a, beer, with a beer and a sword in hand. Yeah. Just looking unhappy. <laughs> yeah, I'm 135 pounds, so just anim R sword. So rumble. Okay, so no, no, actually, where you landed is. When they come out the front door, they will be on the other side of these. Of okay, these so three they back. are about to turn away. Yeah, yep. So let's draw it out real quick. Got him hemmed, really got him hemmed in. Huge dude to the front. Hell yeah. Crazy dwarf jumping <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, and there's a barbarian. <laughs> if, I was, yeah, if I was a barbarian, it'd be immediately screaming on the way down. <laughs> So Ingvald is on uh, the south side of them. You guys come busting out the front door um, on, on the north side of them. Um, Ing- Ingvald's going to go first just because it took you guys longer oh, sure, sure. to get down there. And then he gets a surprise round on the bad guys. So the, the one that you recognize, um, he's a human. He's 5'9", has black hair, brown eyes. He's very thin. He's wearing a studded leather vest. And black breeches and boots. He has a crooked nose from where it's been broken. He doesn't have any visible tattoos or scars, but you definitely know you recognize that broken nose from saw that Mike's. Yeah, Captain Fugly over here. <laughs> exactly. His new name. Um, the other two guys, um, you know, they're both normal white. Just, just, just yeah, two grump looking duders. Some, some goofy, some yeah, goofy some dudes goofy out dudes. here fighting a kid. Yep, and uh, when uh, um, when he sees you land, he kind of turns and he's he's uh, you know the the guy the hobo looking guy that you guys have seen before. Yeah. Um, he kind of turns and he sees you and he's taken aback that he mumbles something to uh, one of the guys, uh, the guy that was holding the kid, and uh, the kid he, he lets go of the kid's arm. And the kid takes off running uh, towards us. He, uh, yeah, towards you, even though you're not has- around that corner yet, though. Okay. So he runs towards. Uh, Mal Fader and towards Mike. So is, uh, that, is that a directional? The uh, go ahead, yeah, go ahead with. So is this this is him? Uh, yep. All right, so he's the closest to me. Yep, hobo uh, guy is the closest to you. So I get a surprise round. Yep. So uh, first, I use my extra action money to chug a beer. Yep. Obviously. Smash a whole beer. Yep. Beer. <laughs> Smash a beer and I make direct eye contact with him <laughs> while doing it. I do not break. <laughs> literally staring through his soul. <laughs> um, and I so I'll charge up to him, and I still get attack. Right? That would be it for that, because right. and then I, that's my surprise. So then I get I start to get immediately. Uh, we'd roll initiative. Roll initiative yep. at this point. Yep. Uh, yeah. All right. So Ingvald goes first, then, then Mike, then Hopo guy, yeah, then Malfader, then Hobo, then Michelangelo, and then the, the two other losers. Two. Grunt one and two. Okay. Yeah, Dingleberry and fuck off over there. So. Um, cool. Uh, I am. I immediately attacked with my short sword. So, oh, that's a crit. Twenty. Nice. Uh, and so, let's say seven nine. Okay. So we'll call. Oh, that was to. Uh, that was the hobo guy, right? Guy. Okay. Um, so your first attack. Uh, you know, it it. You know, gets in there and it clips his arm uh, for sure uh, with what you thought was going to be a super awesome uh, hit, but uh, turns out <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> yeah, be running right in your direction. Yep. All right, like running right into me. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Well, I uh, try to intercept the kid. Oh. What's wrong? Yeah. He, uh, you know, gasping like. There's men over there. They they're uh, hurting some dwarf guy that jumped out of a window. We'll take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do I see? I see this guy here. Anything else? What kind of lighting is back here? Not, Not a moment. lot at all. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you've got moonlight and starlight, but there's no, like, sconces on the side of the building or anything. And you're between buildings right now. All right. Um, I'll uh, brandish the longsword and shield. And... Okay, here. Okay. Stand down. 16 plus 6, 22. <laughs> uh, he, he, looks, he looks scared, for sure. Lots of impressive stuff happening around him. <laughs> um, <laughs> falling, fucking dwarves falling, falling dwarves, giant, knights, <laughs> giant at me. men coming and yelling at me. <laughs> he yelled at me. We may very well be dealing with the two most dangerous men on the planet. Whoa, that was impressive. I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, I wasn't sure that that would work to get your attention. I'm glad to see that uh, that that plan did work. He says, "Boys, get him." And so then he takes out, uh, he draws his uh, weapon, um, which he didn't have drawn at first. And uh, he it's a short sword. Then he goes to attack. And there he we rolls, go. He rolls a nine. No. So that's, that's a miss with the first attack. Then he rolls a 16, which nope. I think is a miss for the second attack. Yep. So. And then it is... Yeah. Uh, when he misses, I look, at, I look at him and say, attention got... <laughs> um... Michelangelo's turn. I'm going to run up right there, kind of between. Oh, yeah, so we're right both flanking. Awesome. Yeah. So both of them. Awesome. Both Beautiful. Of them. And then I'm going to attack. Beautimus. Uh, hobo guy. Okay. Dwarf flying out of the sky, giant knight, and now fucking turtle. Uh, it's a razorback no. turtle. What the fuck? Oh, I have advantage because I'm flanking. Yes. Hey. Oh, better. hell yeah. You're the man now, dog. Four, so 13 damage. Nice. Okay, so uh, you hit him, like, right square in the chest, you know, which is wearing the studded leather armor, but it definitely knocked some wind out of him. One of the thugs, um, the one that is farthest away from me, moves up and attacks Michelangelo. So he will be using a, uh, he's got, like, a scimitar, like a pirate-style scimitar that he yanks out and... <clears throat> Takes a hack at you with. Um, advantage. So, is it 19 to hit? Uh, yeah, that hits. So, he hit you for 8 damage. He takes 3 from my shell. Can't, just can't catch a brain. <laughs> he goes to attack you, and uh, he uh, hits hits your shell with his uh, with his scimitar. So you block it with your big tortle shell. Um, but also his hand keeps going and hits your <laughs> one of the spikes on the back of your shell. And ah! Like, damn it! Other guy that's there will... Uh, Wanna get yelled at? The one that's right next to Malfader will attack Malfader. Um, Is he suffer though, any penalties for being intimidated? Yes. But that doesn't matter, actually. Um, I'm pretty sure, because that is a 24 to hit. Alrighty then. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that hits. Seven damage. Attack again with my short sword. That is a critical failure. Um, you have a oh, but advantage. I have advantage. Oh, thank God. Sixteen plus twenty-one to hit. Plus ah. Three, eight, eleven. Yeah. You hit him again, and uh, you guys are just chipping away at his his leather armor. But he got a slash across his his side again. So you guys are. Definitely lighting him up. All right. Uh, the one that I yelled at and hit me I shall pay for his actions. Yep. Work inside his head. Ten. To hit? Yeah. No. You got advantage, though. Oh, good. Much better. Twenty-one. That's it. Coming in handy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> really? Six. Okay. That's Mildly punished. Thug number two. Yeah. Oh, and as a bonus action with my shield master feet, I will shove him with my shield into the guy behind him. Okay. My strength, 17. Uh, got an 18. Yep. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. Okay. Hobo again attacks Ingvald. 
First attack is an 18. <laughs> and second attack is a 15. Misses. All right. You take four damage, but you need to make a constitution save. Oh. 18? Uh, yeah. That Actually, you know, saving throw, so it's a uh, 19. 19. Okay. Do you have any benefits against poison damage already? Yeah, I have iron liver. Yeah. I'm basically not immune to poison damage. Yeah, no, you're good. You're good. So essentially, he he does get a, an attack on you, and that attack attack does scratch, like slice open your skin, um, just a little bit. And, okay. And uh, so, uh, but nothing uh, nothing happens outside of that. Just a small small little hit. Uh, so you said he uh, he missed an attack. You said. Yeah. Uh, when a melee attack misses me, I can move five feet without provoking out. Okay. And then ready my birds. Okay. All right, uh, Michelangelo. I'll hit hobo guy again. Okay. Nope, I won't. And I don't have advantage now that West backed up. For five oh, damage. Oh fuck off! I didn't even think about that. It's okay. It is thug guys. Grunt. Yeah. Yeah. So grunt one attacks Michelangelo again. That is an eighteen to hit. Yep. Okay. Hits. For five damage. He takes four. So he again hits your shell, and he's like, God damn it! <laughs> Take open that. That's yeah, great. <laughs> You're not ever going to actually attack that guy. Nope. <laughs> Kill himself on my shell. All right, it's thug number two attacks Malfader again. That is a 17. That's a miss. It's a miss. So he takes a swing at you, and you gracefully slide to, you know, to the left, and, and uh, it makes a <laughs> noise that... Just barely missing. Nice. And it is back to Ingvald's turn. Hey, dart. That's it. Gotcha. So you throw a dart and it sticks him right in the collarbone. <laughs> and, uh, Ow. yeah, he um, takes a uh, five foot step backwards. Attack of opportunity. Yep. 15. Okay. That hit? No. Sorry. A 15 is this. 15 damage. No. A hit first. Yes. 15 damage. <laughs> Moving along. Okay, so that was his reaction to step back. Um, and then it is now Malfader's turn. Um, take a move action. Three of them. Just swing at this guy. Same one that I've been attacking. Okay, so it's like number two? Yeah. So that's a seven. Okay, that's a, that's a miss. Okay, and I'll use my bonus action again to just shove him. Okay. Shove him prone. 21. Uh, this time he got a 7. Oh, ho, ho, it's my dick. So, um... He is knocked prone. Oh, nope, guy. the other one. Yeah. Oh, the other one. So you, you attack twice. He uh, he uses his own sword, to his, his scimitar, to parry the blows. Um, so you, you don't actually hit him. But then uh, with the second parry, he's a little bit off his, off his uh, stance. And you... Ram your shield right into him and just knock him flat <coughs> on the ground. Oh. Nice. Then, Take that. <laughs> uh, hobo guy says, Whoa, this did not go quite as planned. And he takes a step back away from you, uh, away from Malfader. Yep, so he's free, so attack, attack of opportunity. Of yep. Eight. Negative. You suck. You had a, Did you have advantage when he moved originally? Um... No. 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 No, no that gap is too far. Alright, uh, he pulls an item out of his pocket, appears to activate it somehow, and then just poof, gone. And um, <clears throat> one of the thugs, the one that's standing, so thug number one, says, What the hell? Where did Whispers go? Whispers. Yeah, right in the collarbone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's still on him. <laughs> have fun wrenching well, that need one that out. dart back. <laughs> have fun wrenching that back. That's what I'm actually upset about. <laughs> now it is Michelangelo. I'll hit the one right in front of me. Uh, 22. Take a 22. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a hit. And just save all, all three Nine, of them. 13. Go ahead. I don't have proficiency. 
Not the damage, no. 13. 13 damage? Yep, again. Takes another blow to the studded leather. Or he takes a blow to the studded leather armor. You guys were hitting whispers before. Yeah. Um, hobo guy. Uh, but this guy takes his first blow to the armor. He gets winded as well. Um, goes to take a s- step back almost, but his buddy's laying on the ground right behind him. Well, so. he could go back this way. Yeah, his bud's to his right. Yeah, he, he's, he's provoking it. <laughs> he's not going okay. He didn't quite get that far away. Yeah. Okay. It is the thug's turn. So, uh, thug number one attacks Michelangelo again, and that's a oh, miss because he's no longer. He doesn't have advantage. Uh, thug number two goes to. St- or he stands up, so there's his movement action, and then he goes to attack Malfader. I believe it's only half his move action, actually. Oh, really? Well, he's just going to do he that. He can attack. Run. He's um, stupid. She would get advantage on now. One e to hit, so it's a hit. Yeah. So he hits you for uh, nine damage. So he takes a swing and ouch. It uh, definitely. Yep. You don't get your shield up in time, and he definitely clips your right your uh, arm. And then it is Ingvald's turn. They're at the guy that was already standing up. Okay. Dog number one. That's a hit. So. Another dart uh, gets thrown. This one clips the guy right in his shoulder. Um, not his, not his scimitar hand though. His other, his other hand. Um, he is not appreciative. Malfader. Now it has a. I'm gonna cast searing smite in this action, which uh, use my sword flare with white hot intensity. Any attack that hits in the next minute uh, takes additional fire damage. Nice. And to ignite in flames. Okay. Righteous anger. Oh, hell yeah. 21. Yep, we have advantage. Advantage. Too. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good call. In and he's on fire. <laughs> so, so you get up. You say some uh, prayer mumbo jumbo. <laughs> and uh, you magically set your sword on fire, which then you hit the guy with and set him on fire. <laughs> yeah. so, um, while he's on fire, at the start of each of his turns until the spell ends, he needs to make a con save. On a fail save, he takes an additional d6 of fire damage. Good to know. <laughs> uh-huh. All right, Michelangelo. Um, hit the guy right in front of me. Yeah, 17 plus. A 12 damage. Okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> he takes that blow. Um, he goes to block it with his with his uh, scimitar, but he doesn't get it up in time, and you crack him on the head. <laughs> Heavy, so. Um, he's not quite not quite dead yet, but, but he's definitely blood just... <laughs> Be stone dead in a moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Splattered a little bit. <laughs> All right, thugs turn. Um, so that guy is going to um, bolt off to try and take away, or to, to try and run away. So he's going to run south. Yep. Game over, man. Yep. With uh, advantage. Yeah. He was starting. Yep. Originally flanked. Nineteen to hit. That's a hit. 15. That's a hit. 11 damage. 12, and he's on fire. Hasta la vista, baby. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> he's <Okay>. dead. <laughs> that guy's so he, he goes to, to bolt off and run, feeling like he just got cracked upside the head. And uh, as soon as he turns to bolt, both of your weapons just hack at him, and he explodes <laughs> into flames. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, he's dead. <laughs> he, he dead. Uh, thug, thug number two is going to try and take one last... Saving throw to see if he <laughs> takes damage. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, he does take damage, so there's that. So oh, that's he right. failed his constitution, so he said D6. Yeah, it's four. Four? Okay. So he takes four damage from being on fire. 
And he also painfully missed his attack on, on Valfrayer. So he goes to take another swing at you, and you easily deflect it with the shield. Like, not even a full on. Probably a little preoccupied trying to beat the flame yeah. off his head. Yeah, he's mostly just flailing his weapon about, <laughs> trying to <laughs> screaming like a little. Please! <laughs> Get rid of this guy. Yeah. 18 plus proficiency. Plus the 4. So That's two. it. Yeah. Okay. It's a dirt. Yeah, so he's flailing his weapon about, still on fire, and takes a dart right in the back of his neck. And he's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's still up? Yeah, he's still up. He's the trooper. <laughs> he's been taking it. Like he's oh, man. The All scariest right, so day of his life. Probably Mel, the last. Mel so. Vader's turn. Um, so yeah, I'll take another swing at the uh, flaming sword of doom. Fifteen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a bonus action. I'm not gonna prone with the shield. Yeah. Attempt. Yeah. Seventeen to the seventeen contested. Yeah. He falls down again. Boom. Yeah. Rolling around the ground. Bye. Stop, drop, and roll. Um. So, just so you guys know, while a while a creature is prone or a person is prone, um, the only movement option is to crawl unless it stands back up. Uh, the uh, they have disadvantage on all of their attack rolls, and then an attack roll against them has advantage, which you guys already had anyway. Um, if you're within five feet, but if you're more than five feet away, you have a disadvantage. So your darts would be at a disadvantage. Probably not. <laughs> and if so, I can... Well, I don't know. I mean, Malfader didn't actually do any damage to him. He just knocked him down on the ground. To be fair, he has two people who could damage him. Him Aren't... and himself. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay. With, with him throwing, isn't everything an automatic crit? No, if he was incapacitated, it would be. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. We don't need to auto-crit him now. <laughs> <laughs> just like... Literally beat him while he's down. He's messed up. I mean, I could grapple him and hold him. Because <laughs> it getting dark. Uh, <laughs> break his face uh, against your shield. <laughs> Seventeen to hit. That's a hit. Five damage. Okay. Um, so we'll say he's down there on the ground and flailing about, and so he literally he's, just hammered. He's, his he's, head. Yeah, he's <laughs> a big whack right on his. He's like flailing and tries to block. Actually, we probably shouldn't kill him. We should oh, probably. Oh, yes, hell. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I had a moment of. Alright, well, he is going to make his constitution, and he does. He makes it that allows him to uh, put the fire out. Uh, 14 save DC. Yep, so he makes it. So yep. he's down there. He stop, drops, Drop and rolls. <laughs> I was just trying to help put the fire out. <laughs> with your, with, your with, my, with my hammer. <laughs> yeah. I got that part. Um, <laughs> he rolls himself to, to put the fire out, and while he's flailing, he swings his, uh, his scimitar at your uh, at Mel Fader's ankles. With disadvantage, because he's still prone. Yeah, disadvantage. So. And uh, he critically failed. Ah! Yes! So, oh, fantastic. Um, he goes to he to uh, flail and, and hit, and the, uh, the scimitar actually <laughs> goes flying out of his hand. <laughs> and it bounces off the wall of the building right next to you and kind of tink back out into the into the street. <laughs> Shit. Um, I stifle a chuckle. <laughs> Probably grab him so, and yeah. question him about whispers and why oh, they wanted our attention. So, yeah, I had his throat. Okay. Yeah. So he he went to, uh, um, you know, as you guys are kind of given some space, and you go to, you know, apprehend him. You know, he does go to draw the dagger from his boot, but you guys. Um, I mean, we can he, render him unconscious <laughs> at this point. Michelangelo just puts a giant we twelve foot on his <laughs> on his wrist, and he's like, <laughs> crunch, <laughs> <laughs> just to make your day a little bit worse. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you guys have a uh, a captive. I assume one of you guys probably involved reach down. Takes the dagger out of his boot. Yeah, I take it. Yeah. I take his weapon and pat him down to make sure there's nothing else hidden anywhere on his person. Do yeah. I find anything? Uh, yeah, he smells like 
burnt clothes and burnt hair and um, yeah, he uh, he's wearing studded leather armor but it's charred and crispy now and um, the other guys too he's yeah. still burning the other guy's still yeah, just burning on dead. the ground just, yeah. this is a corpse yeah, yeah. he's fire. not making a constitution save so it's getting kind of smoky and smelly yeah. here in this well, it's gonna, like, walk over and put him out <laughs> put the fire out okay. kick some dirt on him yeah you uh, use your turtle foot and you roll him over a couple times <laughs> without getting too close, and maybe use your hammer a little bit to pat out a couple places, <laughs> and then <laughs> neither of them had have gold on. Do you have any other weapons outside of that dagger or anything? No, both of them had a scimitar and a dagger, and that was scimitar is still good. The dagger is still good. I pocket the dagger that I took. Um, do I recall there being any town guards nearby? Um, you, I mean, like they were out patrolling, the walking point. around. So if you went out and hollered out or, you know, looked around, you could probably find uh, find one. Um, you got the feeling from talking to Judge earlier that she was saying fights and brawls and stuff are, right. are typical. Like, they're not going to get so engaged in somebody else's stuff as yeah. long as they're not bothering citizens. Well, I was just wondering if they had, like, a barracks or a jail or something we could... Yeah. Or, or we'll just drag him up to one of the rooms and take him up to one of our rooms. Yeah, we might want to question him before we turn him in. We you might have a chance after. Cut off. Uh, oh. <laughs> Six fingers. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Without even it. asking a question, we're just going to do that first. <laughs> cut off the so fingers. He, so he knows we mean business. <laughs> he involves like I'm coming up with a special brew. <laughs> Call it human hands. <laughs> I call it digits. <laughs> you call it the rumbly in the tummy. Uh, dead man's hand. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, he he complies. Oh, like, is a kid nearby? By the way, he he ran off. He, he yeah, he's he's street. long gone. Yeah. Um, so he complies with whatever you guys say. Um, as you start to lift him up, he's like, "Just kill me now. Just whatever you do to me, whispers will do so much worse." Just, just kill me. Look, I just look at him and say, you wish. Gag him and start right. dragging. I have Zone of Truth. Bird. So, uh, cool. if we want to ask him things. Yeah, we'll go, ahead and, uh, we'll go oh. to my room. Okay, so you guys walk back into the inn. Um, the innkeeper, she's not behind the, the bar anymore. There is there is somebody there you know, that, that is still working. Um, just one of the servers who Hello. appears to work out late night shift. And uh, she sees you guys walk in <laughs> with a uh, crispy guy who is <laughs> all burned and gagged. And, gagged and he's got, you know, he's all roped up and um, he's bleeding in multiple places. And uh, and she just raises one eyebrow at you guys and just would give her a wink. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Malfader winks at her and you guys carry the guy upstairs. Yeah, I, toss a, I toss a gold piece to her so just like... <laughs> Sorry for the mess. <laughs> yeah. um, so she takes the, she catches the uh, gold piece from Ingvald and um, puts it into her apron and. <laughs> At a girl, Abigail. <laughs> continues on. So yeah, I know every, I know most of the ends. I know this person. Um, the no, no, no. This is no, just one of the citizens one. that covers. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so yeah, we're up in my room. Yep. Okay, so you guys make it up to your room. Already? Yeah, I'll cast Zone of Truth. How long? It lasts for ten minutes. Alright, hopefully you... this guy lasts for ten minutes. <laughs> you create a magical zone that guards against deception in a 15-foot radius sphere centered on a point of your choice. <gasps> okay, so we'll just cast Zone of Truth on um, eight minutes. A creature that enters it for the first time on its turn must make a charisma saving throw. On a failed save, the creature can't speak deliberate lies while within the radius. All right, so um, while you guys are sitting him down and you're casting your a um, mark under his sleeve. It's not from like our swords or burns or anything. It's a, like a tattoo type mark? Yeah, like a tattoo. And it looks like it's essentially a triangle, um, but it has a... It's an upside down martini glass. <laughs> so yeah, an upside down <laughs> martini glass, okay. essentially, with no, with no base. No base. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's a martini glass, upside down with just a stem. 
Is this something we've maybe seen? Is it political or religious in nature? You guys don't know. It, it's nothing that you have seen okay. before. First time. But it's uh, definitely tattooed on me. Okay. What do we want to ask this guy about whispers? He failed the... I'm telling you. Oh. <laughs> So I assume he sat in like a chair in the room. So I'm gonna, I sit on the bed and I just, just stare at him and just drink. So I will. Uh, so, who is Whispers? Whispers is the guy that recruits people and teaches us how to do magic. Magic. Yeah. Whispers a wizard? Um, more like a... <clears throat> um, not really. He, like, he uses magic. He doesn't have it in him. This town? Uh, he operates wherever he's sent. Who sends this Whispers? Um, it's a wizard that sends him. My name is Master Daoshe. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, insight? Do I think this guy's pulling my chain? You can make an insight. Hey. Nat, nat 20. He seems to be telling the truth. Nat, nat, nat 20? Yeah. Well, plus you've got your uh, zone of truth. Zone yeah. of truth. Right. I mean, but we don't know if he... Yeah. You don't know how that works yet. Yeah. Maybe. So we don't know, yeah. But your nat 20 insight should give us yeah. a better clue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where do we find this Master Duche? Uh, you don't. He finds you. Like, he doesn't, he doesn't reside in a specific place that we know of. How can I find this Whispers? Whispers is typically out of chatter. Mm-hmm. He may have been hanging out at bikes. Trying to spy on us. Because we had a. He may never be there again. Yeah. Keep track of upcoming recruits. Yeah. He essentially, watch the recruits, and then, you know, we no. were told to come here after you guys when you were sent here. Child. He said it was just to get our attention. I don't think the kid. I think it was just a random kid they grabbed to get our attention. So I turned the guy. Was it just a random kid? Yeah. Yeah. We didn't even. Like, we literally grabbed him and told him to scream. So he did. That's not very nice. I'll punch him in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, yeah, so Malfader punches him right in the mouth, and a couple teeth just pop right out. Like, <laughs> he, he just died. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Was non-lethal. He, he <laughs> yeah, non-lethal, but... <laughs> no, non-lethal. But blunt force had, trauma to the face. <laughs> he, had, he had two health left. Dude's done. Smoke. Oh, those last two teeth were it. <laughs> I could, I could, we'll heal him up a bit and do it again. <laughs> I have spared the dime. Yeah, see? <laughs> we're, we're good. Good, good. All day. <laughs> I got all day, man. <laughs> okay. Heal him up. Hit him again. Kill him again. <laughs> You're running out of teeth. <laughs> Or anything else? I mean, he doesn't know anything super useful. So, how did you come to know Whispers? Um, found me in a tavern after a brawl fight. For one, he offered me work. Yeah. Did you? Did you fight another kid? Did you beat a child? Yes. Are you happy you got her attention? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. <laughs> this zone of truth thing sucks. So, what has this whisper going to do to you that we have interrogated you? He will, if he doesn't kill me, um, he will likely cut out my tongue. That's why they call him whispers. If you fail him, he removes your tongue from you. Sorry, sorry, not sorry. Anything else? We know he works for Master Douche. We know where he is. I honestly didn't know he could just disappear like that, so... <laughs> nah. mm-hmm. I see we... I see we let him go. No, don't let him go. I mean, follow him. Whispers has to come get him, right? I don't... Just hang on to him as bait. 
There you go. We have other things to do. Okay. Can I go fight harpies tomorrow? Oh, we yeah. We'll turn him, do, turn him into the project. guard. Because are, are we going to take him with us when we go fight harpies? You feed him to the harpies. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> Thought about it. <laughs> no. Dude, you got to be punished for fighting children. <laughs> turn him into the guard. Yeah. Tell him this, he's not just, what wasn't just a bar um, fight. He's, yeah, somebody summon a guard, and uh, we'll get this guy to confess to a guard while he's still in the zone of truth. How long is the duration on that? Ten, ten minutes. Oh, yeah. We yeah, guard there. will be here in time. So I mean, yeah. we're, we're, actually, are we going to bed again? Well, once they take still this guy, yeah, I don't want yeah, to lingering. Can, yeah, we still have an I can game. cast it five more times. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh I can lie again. Nope. Right. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, stick my head out the window and holler for a guard. Attention. Yeah, eventually one of the guards comes uh, comes up to the room. Well met. Inquires what's going on. You guys give her a quick debrief. Um, she meets the, uh, the duder, and uh, he... Tells the same story. Um, Cast his own truth again. Tells the same story. Uh, she take him into uh, the captain. Um, she'll, you know, lock him up overnight. But tomorrow it'll be the captain's decision whether they keep him here or if they uh, um, decide to send him back with with you guys to Cheddar for the kill. So, if he really attacked a child here in town, then he attacked a citizen. So, here is a good place for a break. You guys go to sleep. All right. Ah, good times. Good times. This concludes this episode of A Fool's Quest. Join us next time for more fun and daring adventure. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to like, subscribe, review, and comment on your favorite platform to listen to A Fool's Quest. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.